In this video, I want to go over virtualization in Debian. And VirtualBox is pretty much the de facto program when it comes to installing virtual machines. But what if it's not available or supported on your distribution, like in Debian? VirtualBox is not in the, in the Buster repositories, it's not going to be in the backports, and it's not in the testing repositories, and well, there is an unofficial or unsupported version in SID, but anyway. And before you make a comment saying that there is a way to install VirtualBox on Debian, let me agree with you. There is absolutely a way to get VirtualBox running on Debian, but in my case, there was a dependency problem, there were key problems, there were several different problems, and the key problem was pretty easy, but the, depend the dependency was also not in the repository, so I wound up having to download a dev package from a website because it just wasn't anywhere else. And I don't like to do that. And I really don't recommend doing that. Because, well, you have a package manager for a reason. But anyway, let's look at it logically. You don't have to use VirtualBox, or VMware for that matter, to get virtualization any more than you have to use Microsoft Office to type a document. Because it's not about the software that you use, it's about the end result. So with that said, let's install KVM, QEMU, and Vert Manager, and see if we can install a VM. Let's get to it. So here in, in our terminal, we're going to need to do a few things before we can actually start Vert Manager, especially if you don't have it installed. So here we go. Uh, first things first, let's make this a little bit bigger. That's a little better. So now let's go ahead and run updates. So sudo apt update. And I'm already up to date, so if if you're on Debian as well, go ahead and run updates. That way it just gets everything refreshed. So we're going to clear the screen. Uh, the packages we need to install to get Vert Manager and everything up and running, let's do this. Let's do sudo apt install qemu-kvm uh, libvert clients libvert daemon libvert daemon dash system uh, let's see I'm looking at my notes uh, bridge utils uh, vert inst and vert manager give that the yy flag if you if you want to so that way you can just let it run but I've already got all this installed, so I'm not going to I'm not going to run that yet. So once that command is done running, there's a couple of system D things you're going to need to do. So let's go ahead and walk through that. So let's let's do sudo systemctl enable libvertd. Then you want to go ahead and start libvertd because when you enable something in system CTL or in system D rather, when you enable it, it just enables it on boot. It doesn't actually start the service. So let's do the same command sudo system CTL start lib vert D. All right, we're still not quite done. We need to actually add our user to a couple of groups. So let's do sudo add user. Mike or your user to libvert. I've already done this, so I don't have to do it now. So so hit enter and run and run that command, and then see as as you can see, I'm already a member of libvert. So then do the same command, but add dash q e m u. Run that. And you can see I'm already a member of that group as well. Now we're just about ready to rock. Let's close this terminal and get hop over to the desktop and we will get Vert Manager running and let's install 
something. Probably, probably Debian because, well, I'm a Debian guy. So here we are on the desktop and I'm running a tiling window manager. I'm going to start vert manager with the menu. And you can see I've already got one version of Ubuntu installed. This is actually a Ubuntu server. I just got just kind of playing around with it. So let's actually create a new one. We hit the plus icon and that pulls up a window here. And it will let you choose local install media, network install, network boot, or import existing disk image. So if you had if you restored something and then let's say you reinstalled and you kept everything on a separate drive like I'm doing, you can import an existing VM with this button here. So what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to install from local media. We'll hit forward. And here is where you choose your ISO. You see there's no media selected, so we're going to browse for the media. When it pulls up this window, you're probably not going to have everything that I've got. So what I recommend doing is just hitting this plus this plus button down here and creating a and creating a folder with all of your operating systems on it. And I have and I have named that ISOs. And right now in my ISOs directory, I have a I have Arch Linux, Debian 10.4 Net Installer, Ubuntu 2004 Desktop, and Ubuntu 2004 Live Server. So let's choose Debian 10.4. We're going to choose that volume, and you see it populated here. And right here, it automatically detects what version we're installing here. We're good to go. Let's hit forward. Now the memory, it's it wants to do one gig of memory and two C and two CPU cores. Let's make this four gigs. So let's do four zero nine six because ten twenty four times four. So we should be good to go there. Let's hit forward. And I want to make, I want to put this on its own drive or on a, a separate drive from my root partition. So I'm going to select or create custom storage, select manage, and then go to another folder that I create or another volume rather that I created here. So you can, you can do that by hitting the plus button and navigating to another folder that you want to just put your virtual machines in. Now we're going to select a volume here. You see, I have a Debian testing uh, QCAL, which, which that's the, the type of file or format rather that QEMU uh, uses instead of a instead of a VBox or whatever VirtualBox does. I'm not going to do that one. I'm going to add I'm going to add another with the plus button here. And that pulls up yet another window. We're going to call this Debian 10. I don't know Buster. Format is QCAL2, or you can do RAW, but QCAL2 is default. Uh, the max capacity is 20 gigs. You know what? I'm just going to leave that alone. I'm going to hit finish. And we're going to choose the volume. So Debian 10 Buster.QCAL2. And you see it, it, auto, it automatically populated here. So we hit forward again. And we named this Debian 10. I'm going to name it Debian 10 Buster. And you can, you can select this button to customize the configuration before installation. So now all we need to do is select Finish. And now we have an, yet another window pop up. And this will kind of just give you an overview for customizing the installation or the little box that we checked earlier. We're going to install Debian 10 Buster. We're giving it two CPU cores, four gigs of RAM, 20 gigs from the heart, 20 gigs of drive space. And there's a lot more that you can do here, especially, especially passing through like a virtual, uh, passing through a USB device or a sound card or a graphics card or something like that but that's really beyond the scope of this video this is just kind of a set something up and see if we can get it to work type video 
but I know there I know there is a way to do all this, but that has to do with IOMMU IO groups and which is well just well well beyond the scope of this video. Um, it's going to take a lot more research and a lot more practice before I can make a video about that. So all I'm going to do here is just leave all this at default. I just kind of wanted to show this window here as well. You can. So w once everything here looks good, you go up here to the top left and select begin installation. It creates the domain and it pops up this window. And here we're just going to select the graphical install. It's going to flash a little bit and now we just go through a standard Debian installation. And you guys have seen me install Debian several times. I'm probably just going to pause the video or, or just fast forward through this. And yeah, I'll catch you on the other side. All right. And with the installation complete, we can hit continue. And here we are at the login screen. So I'm just going to log in real quick. And I chose the XFCE version because, well, that's what I know the, be the best anyway. So I'm just going to customize it a little bit. And I'm going to add the whisker menu because that's, uh, that's my favorite one. And let's change the resolution. And that's a little bit better. So that was a fairly easy process to install Debian or you can do Ubuntu or Arch or Windows, whatever. And it was a fairly easy process, pretty painless. Uh, it's just uh, getting used to a new user interface. And honestly, it's pretty simple once you kind of get the hang of it. Uh, that, that one right there is actually the second virtual machine I've ever installed on Vert Manager. And you know, I had to play with it a little while to kind of get everything set up the way I wanted. But all in all, it's not not a bad system and on debian it's definitely not a bad choice so that's about all i've got for today vert manager's pretty easy to set up it's not it's not it's not bad at all it's actually way easier to set it up on debian than it was to try to get virtualbox installed uh, i was successful in getting virtualbox installed but it was a real pain in the rear end but I'm not saying it's not possible. I'm just saying that it's not as easy as this was. If you see that I missed something or what have you, uh, leave a comment and let me, and let me know also in the comments below what your favorite virtualization software is. So thank y'all for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Like, share, and subscribe.